Hi, welcome back. This is a series on Postgres for MySQL DBAs. My name is Dave Stokes. I'm a technology evangelist at Bricona. And now we're going to take a look at indexes, which are a lot different in some ways than what you're used to in MySQL. Other ways you're going to find out that uh, B-tree indexes are pretty much the same. Why this series? Well, if you're a MySQL DBA looking to expand your horizons or just want to learn about Postgres, it's kind of hard sometimes to uh, learn how to, to start and where to start. And this series walks you through everything from simple install to now indexes. So index types. Uh, this is a very target-rich environment in the Postgres world, uh, much more lavish than what you're used to in MySQL. What we're going to cover uh, the many types of indexes commonly used with Postgres and their uses. Now, Postgres has several index types. Uh, and not even that, I hate to use the word types. Um, B trees are actually B plus trees like you have in MySQL. Uh, hashes, uh, MySQL's had that for a year or two now. Uh, the other ones, um, just you're going to be a little bit excited about uh, SP just is kind of like our spatial indexes in MySQL and then Jin and Bryn. So let's uh, take a look at these. Now they all have different algorithms or in case you have a bunch of algorithms you choose and they're kind of suited to different types of queries. And uh, by default, when you type create index, it creates a B tree index. Uh, by the way, if you want uh, to read more on this, I do recommend the documentation on index types found in the uh, Postgres manual at postgres.org. So B trees, which are actually B plus trees. Uh, we're used to this from Oracle and MySQL. Um, if you want to be able to draw these graphs, and this one's just a little bit fuzzy, I apologize for that. Um, this is a website that'll let you draw your own B tree and uh, more or less the same as MySQL. B trees are great uh, because they let you uh, search for data by using a binary search. So, you know, if it's the value you're searching for is less than 20, you take this leg. If it's more than 20, you take this leg. Uh, if you're looking for a specific value, you keep digging down. Uh, it's like we want the number 10, we know it's left here, we know it's right there, and there's our record. Uh, if we want all values under the value of 10, uh, we know to take this branch of the tree to uh, the, these nodes. Quick example, I create a simple table called staff, and we're going to populate it with some data, and then we create an index on that column. And when we run explain, uh, make sure you add verbose so you can see the the index used, and we run our, our query. Uh, it tells us that it did an index only scan on our table and the, the details for the cost to, uh, to get the information. Now, this is very similar to what you used to in MySQL. Also similar to what you see in MySQL is occasionally you see queries that end up doing a sequential scan or having to read the entire table, which is slow and inefficient. Well, why is that? Well, the optimizer does not recognize lower ID as something that can be tied to an index. So doesn't uh, help us much there. So as your table gets larger, this gets slower and slower unless you are aware that it's not using the index. Well, let's see if we can fix that. Well, let's create a new index, but this time we're going to force it uh, as the argument to use lower ID. And now when we rerun our query, it tells us that it's doing a bitmap index scan using our new index. And much, much, much faster and gets us exactly what we need when we need it. So as you see now, it recognizes the lower ID. Okay, bitmap. I've just mentioned that a bitmap. What is a bitmap? Well, uh, basically bitmaps are, are used when an index lookup might generate multiple hits in the same uh, page or same heap of data. Uh, and it's usually helpful when you have multiple indexes for a, a single query. Now it's um, 
needs row or block level granularity or gives you row or block level granularity. And it kind of does kind of like an outline sketch of where everything is and then goes to those records. Now, the great thing is you don't have to worry about any of that. When it can be done, it is automatically done or enabled by the optimizer. So you don't have to worry about any of that. When it's efficient to do it, it will do it for you. Hash joints. Uh, MySQL's had this uh, for a year or two. Uh, very, very interesting. Now, hash indexes uh, store a 32 bat hash code derived from the value of the index column. So if you have a column with um, the word Chicago in there, it will create a hash of that and uh, put that value out there somewhere in memory. Um, now, it doesn't actually have the value. It has a hash value that's computated. So if something else comes out and has the word Chicago in there, they'll have the same hash address, and we know to put those together. And they only work with an equal operator. So Chicago equals Chicago matches Chicago equals Detroit doesn't match. Okay, this is where we start veering off from what you're used to in MySQL with GIST. GIST is a generalized search tree. It's actually an infrastructure, not an index, although there's a lot of different indexing you can do using GIST. And once again, it's not a single type, it's more of a framework. Um, our trees for uh, GIS uh, type information, uh, array searches, uh, full text searches, um, just about anything, uh, cube data, and uh, very handy. Now, here's an example where we're going to go out and go out and find the 10 places closest to a given point. So if you're looking for the 10 closest uh, pizza places uh, near you, you'd use a function or a query similar to this. Now, um, just works with loosely coupled values uh, like vectors and JSONB and um, also uh, great for multi-dimensional types, uh, range types, and IP network data. Okay, SP just, you saw just, but what's the SP? Well, it's another infrastructure that supports searches and it's non-balanced disk-based data structures uh, such as KD trees, Radix trees, and a whole bunch of others. Um, and you can actually find out what types of data types that are on your, your system by running this query against it to tell you uh, what's enabled for SP gist. So you see here we have text, range, quad point, poly, networks, KD point, and box. Gin. Uh, this is not what you're expecting. Uh, Gin is a inverted index. This is appropriate when you have values that contain uh, multiple components, such as an array. Uh, if you're used to the multi-value array type in MySQL, it's kind of a similar idea. So think text or JSON. Brin. Uh, Brin is block range indexes. Uh, these store summaries about the value stored in consecutive physical blocks. Uh, the data needs to be ordered. It's kind of like a histogram where you want uh, your values roughly sorted. If the data is churning, uh, the Brin index is not going to be as efficient as it should be. Uh, like GIST, SPGIST, GIN, yeah, there's some very various indexing strategies you can use. Uh, you have to read the documentation on that. And it's great for if you have a linear sort order. Uh, Brin features are the amazing thing about Brin is the indexes are uh, tiny even for very large tables and you can skip around them very easily. Now they are very inexpensive to update, but they're slower than a B tree. Uh, for an example, uh, let's create a table and put in, let's see, 1 million rows, and then we create a Brin index. So we create a general index using, you know, the B tree index. Uh, we're going to call that B tree index and we create a, a bin, Brin index. 
notice the syntax create index and the name of the index on the name of the table then we say using brin on the column name and when we go out there and take a look at the size of the pretty printed uh, table our brin index is 24 kb kilobytes our btree index is megabytes uh, much, much, much smaller. So if you're very size constants that can trade off uh, on the speed, so much the better. Now, in conclusion, uh, remember that B-tree is ideal for, for unique values and ranges. Uh, Brin is ideal for indexing of many columns. Uh, with B-tree, you can also have multiple columns where you're, you're indexing several columns in a, uh, in a table. Um, Gin is an idea for indexes with many duplicates, and SPGIST is for uh, data points, and just can be used for everything else. And remember, uh, a lot of these are frameworks, and you can actually go back and uh, write your own or use some of the extensions that are out there. I shouldn't say extension, I should say some of the other variations that are out there. And with that, I'd like to point you out to uh, two documents that I listed very heavily from for this presentation. First is the amazing Bruce Momjim's website. He has a wonderful uh, presentation on indexing. I highly recommend this and all his other material. Also, once again, the docs on the postgres.org site. And with that, that's the end of this presentation. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, please let me have them. Uh, send me your feedback. I'm at Stoker on Twitter. And if you have something you specifically want me to see or cover in this series, please let me know. I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much and have a great day.